The Matan Interlink Bridge Project will transform the infrastructure landscape of the Philippines. Spanning the mouth of the world-famous Manila Bay, the project will provide a vital transportation link for the region and the nation. At 32 kilometers long, the new iconic gateway will drastically cut travel time between the provinces of Cavite and Bataan from 4 to 5 hours down to only 30 minutes. The project is made up of six main components. On the south end, a new highway connection will link the existing roads in Cavite to the bridge. Out over the water, a low causeway structure called the Marine Viaduct carries vehicles along the majority of the bridge and leads to the first of two shipping channel crossings. The South Channel Crossing is an iconic cable stay bridge structure with one of the longest cable stay spans in the world. Near Corregidor Island, the bridge has an interchange which allows for turnarounds and will connect to the island as part of a future project. The North Channel Crossing spans over the second shipping channel. And finally, back on land, the highway extends to connect to the existing roadways in Bataan Province. For a detailed look into each of these project components, we return south to Cavite. Here in Nike, we see how the new highway connects to the existing Entero Seriano Highway and heads alongside Timalan Balsahan before passing through the new gateway entry monument at the water's edge. The marine viaduct follows a gently curving alignment that is derived from the connectivity and navigational constraints. It also creates a pleasantly dynamic driving experience. Deep marine foundations provide stability for all the piers, and the simple single-column pier design creates a clean and contemporary visual rhythm. The South Channel Crossing is one of the longest in the world with a clear main span of 900 meters, which allows the largest shipping and cruise vessels to pass underneath. For this cable-supported segment of the project, the roadway structure changes from concrete box girders of the marine viaducts to lighter steel boxes tied together with cross struts. The road deck is 80 meters above the water, and the full tower height is among the tallest in the world at 335 meters. To create a design that is uniquely Filipino, the architectural shape of the bridge towers take inspiration from their tropical setting and the symbolism of the Philippine flag. The three distinct parts of the flag reflect the left, right, and middle of the bridge towers. The eight original provinces of the sun rays become eight folds of steel, which are colored like the famous teal waters of the island nation. Finally, to reflect the profound sense of faith found throughout the Philippine community, the South Channel Towers fold inward like praying hands. tower design unlike any other in the world, the folded steel inlay gives the insides of the towers a textured feel reminiscent of the thatched palm roofs found on indigenous Filipino houses. This distinction from the smooth gray concrete breaks down the scale of the tower into light thin blades. The tower tops are asymmetrically angled and the pair of towers mirror each other like bookends framing the channel. The architectural lighting for both cable stay structures includes three components. Tower illumination grazing the recesses along the height of the tower, cable uplights, and approach piers lit from small downlights at superstructure level. All fixtures are durable LEDs and the entire bridge will have fully programmable color changing possibilities. The driver's view is the way most people will experience the bridge. This is why it was important to put the tower treatments on the inside surfaces, facing the traffic. The perspective of approaching the towers from far away, and then getting closer and closer, will reveal new details every time the light and shadow change throughout the seasons. The open steel rail barriers allow users to fully enjoy the magnificent views of the surrounding landscape. From the roadway, you can feel how the structure above envelops you, like driving through a cathedral of cables. As the middle segment of the marine viaduct nears Corregidor Island, simple off and on ramps in each direction allow drivers to change direction on the highway. A future project will connect a road from the island to this interchange. The 
North Channel Crossing is the smaller of the two cable stay segments, but it is still a significantly large structure. Its main span stretches 400 meters long. Due to its differing proportions from the South Channel, the roadway deck this time is a frame system comprised of steel girders and floor beams. The deck is lifted 47 meters above the water and the full tower height is 181 meters tall. Where the South Channel crossing was idealized around clasped hands that come together, the North Channel tower evokes uplifted hands as the central steel element opens wider as it nears the top. In this way, they both use the same visual language already established by the architectural theme, but still have their own unique identities. Their sister structures and the rest of the components of the project make up the remaining family of forms within their theme. The architectural lighting for the North Channel Crossing is the same as for the South Channel. The roadway lights for the full project are long-lasting LED fixtures and may be powered by solar panels on top. Their custom design poles are vertical throughout the standard marine viaduct portion of the project, but at the two cable stay crossings, they angle to match the inclination of the cables. As part of the family of forms, the marine viaduct piers share a similar textured inset with a curved base to match the towers, and the twin high-level approach piers that lead up to both cable stake crossings have an extra single stripe of matching teal steel down their sides. The piers throughout the project are all comprised of precast concrete segments. As we near the end of the bridge crossing, it's nice to reflect on the journey of implementing the project. After completion of the feasibility report in 2019, the project began detailed engineering design in 2020, and with the cooperation and coordination of many government agencies, this final design phase will conclude in 2022 or early 2023. Four to five years of construction will follow, bringing with it at least 3,000 new jobs, and the possible opening date for the bridge is late 2027 or early 2028. Finally, as the bridge reaches the shore in Bataan, it passes through another gateway entry monument before continuing up the hill toward Mount View, where it connects to the Roman Superhighway. A project of this scale is an admirable undertaking. Thanks to the hard work of the Department of Public Works and Highways and the financial support of the Asian Development Bank, the Bataan-Cavite Interlink Bridge will be well worth the investment in the Manila Bay community.